Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to show you how to export your Godot project to Xcode so then you can try it out on your iPhone or iPad. And then once we do that, I'm going to show you how to use what Godot calls active development. So that way you won't need to export it every single time to be able to test it on your phone, which speeds up the process tremendously. Um, a couple things before we get started. You do need a Mac and you do need Xcode. If you don't have Xcode yet, Open up uh, App Store and then do a search for Xcode. If you don't have it installed, you'll see a get here. So this would be a get. You would download it, install it. Um, it does take a while to download. It's pretty big. So just heads up on that. But once you have Xcode installed, ready to go as far as that's concerned. And then back in Godot here, what we want to do, um, a couple of things I like to do anyway, if we go to project and project settings, if you go to icon, you can change the icon so that it's not that default Godot image. So that way when you put it on your phone, you actually have an actual app icon. So if you have one, throw it in here into this icon folder here. I already put my OP logo, so it's it's there. But this is where you would change that. Um, also under boot splash, you can change this image here as well. So that way, whenever you start up the app, you'll see your, your logo there. Um, you can also change the background color. I just made it black so the white stands out better. But that is where you would uh, change those two. Um, one other thing in here, if you go into Windows, or Windows, sorry, you scroll down to handheld orientation. By default, this is on landscape. You change it to sensor, that will allow your phone to be able to switch between landscape and portrait. In my case, I'm trying to develop an app that is capable of doing both landscape and portrait. So that is a pretty important feature. Otherwise, it's going to stay locked in landscape on your phone. So once we get those out of the way, you can close out of this. Now, to be able to export any project out of Godot, you do need to have the export template installed. Um, anytime you update Godot, you will need to do this for even the minor patches. So keep that in mind. It's really easy to do. Uh, manage export templates. If you don't have one installed, you're going to get this red pop up here. You can leave this as best available mirror and then just click download and install. You're going to reach out and download. And then this is one thing you only need to do once per version. So once this is done, you won't have to do this part again. And you'll know you have it done correctly whenever this red export goes away. And it looks like that. <laughs> you can close out of this window. Okay, so the next part is we need to go up to Project, Export, click on Add iOS. And when you do this, you're going to get a few warnings down at the bottom. Target platform requires ETC to... Blah, 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 blah. If you're on 4.2.1, you can click on this Fix Import, and it'll fix it for you automatically. If you're not on 4.2, you go under Project, Project Settings, you search for Import, under Rendering, Textures, and enable this feature here. Now, when you do that, it will ask you to save and restart if you do it this way. If you do it the way, it's going to make me do it anyway. So <laughs> we'll do it anyway. So save and restart. It'll save your project. Relaunch Godot. And also another side feature there. If you have that splash picture, you'll see your logo here. Okay, so now that that's done, project export and go back to the iOS under the App Store Team ID. So if you have a developer account, you'll go to developer.apple.com and get your team ID there. I'm bringing that up real quick just to show you. Now developer.apple.com, you log in, your team ID will be this top field. You just grab that out of there, you paste it in here, now, if you don't have a developer account, you can still get this team ID 
as long as you have a regular Apple ID account. To get that, you want to bring up Xcode. I'll take a moment to come up. Um, you don't even need to bring up a project quite yet. Um, go to the Xcode and then settings. Log in with your general Apple ID. So whatever you use for your iPhones now. To do that, you would just hit the plus, click on Apple ID, and continue, and then put in your email address and your password. Once you do that, the, um, the team ID should pop up automatically. So click on that and then say manage certificates. I've done this twice already, so I'm not going to do it again. But to do this, you would hit the plus arrow or plus button, and it would generate a new one. At that point, you would close out of this, close out of this, and then do a command spacebar to bring up the spotlight search. And then in here, type in passwords. No, I'm sorry, keychain. Keychain access. Now, the first time you do that, it may ask you if you want to go into the passwords or keychain access. Make sure you pick keychain access. And once you do that, in the keychain access, you should see the Apple developer certificate here. You'll be able to see the expiration date will be a year out from where you created the certificate. All right, so if you double click on that, you'll then get this pop up. And in here, this organizational unit, this is what they're looking for in Godot. So copy this and close out of these. And then App Store Team ID, paste it in there. Okay, so in my case, I do have a developer account, so I'm going to use that Team ID instead. Down here, you will need a bundle identifier. So this is kind of like a reverse domain lookup. It always starts with com. Dot and then either your personal name or your business name. In my case, I'm going to use my business name, Overshot Productions. And then dot, and then the name of your project. So in this case, I have mobile development as what I'm, I called this example. So mobile development. You cannot have spaces or dashes in here. Otherwise, you will get a, a message. or sorry, underscores, you cannot have underscores. Otherwise, you'll get that error. Character underscore is not allowed in identifier. Once you fill all that out, you won't get any errors across the bottom anymore. At this point, we can go to export path, hit the little folder icon. And then by default, it's going to bring you up into your projects folder. We don't want to export it into the same folder. Otherwise, it's just going to explode. <laughs> going to have too many folders. Uh, if you go up, and then I usually create a folder here called exports for whatever app I'm building, exports. And then in there, I create a folder. And in this case, we're doing iOS, so iOS. And if I was going to do an Android, I would do Android, Mac, PC, whatever. iOS, and then down here, you want to name this file something different than what you have your main file up here, your main project name. So in this case, I'm going to do mobile, oops, mobile underscore development. And then hit save. And then export project. It's going to come up again. Just make sure that's still a different name. Usually it's the same, so you're good. Same as what you put in previously, so you're fine there. Hit save. It will then go through its exporting process here. Usually it only takes 30 seconds to a minute or so, but this adds up. <laughs> Luckily, I'm going to show you ways so that once you do this once, you'll be able to configure Xcode so that it will automatically have all this information. So that way, when you make changes in your Godot project, Xcode will update with that as long as you save the files in Godot which if as long as you run it in the Godot editor, that will automatically save it correctly for you as well. Okay, so at this point, um, you should see down here, export succeeded. You can then bring up Finder and get the uh, folder that you exported to. Okay, so in this case, I did export it into iOS. 
we will see all these different folders in our files. The one we're concerned about is this Xcode proj, P-R-O-J. Double click on that. It will bring up Xcode. Now at this point, you can um, hook up your phone as a device to export it to. Um, if you haven't done that yet, you need to hook up your phone to your Mac with the USB cable. Whenever you do that, you will need to go through the um, trust your PC or trust your device, trust this computer, I think it's called. And then it will ask you to enable developer mode. And if you are using a personal account, you will need to go and verify that you trust this developer. Which if anyone needs help with that, let me know in the comments and I will make a separate video for that. But once you do all that, um, you should see your device that you configured pop up here. And if you hit the play in Xcode here, it will then start to download onto your phone or iPad or whatever device you picked. So it's going to take a moment. You'll see this like um, the first time or two you run it, you may see that. If it's the very, very first time you try running this, you'll get a message sound saying that it has to upload some documents between the phone and Xcode. That can take a few minutes, just let it do its thing. Um, make sure your iPhone or iPad is unlocked while it's doing that, otherwise it will fail. At this point, it is downloaded onto my phone. I have the splash screen that I set up earlier. It will go black for a second or two, and then it will show the game. And since I did switch it over to the sensor, I can switch between landscape and portrait. But the way it is currently, you would have to export it out of Godot every single time you want to test it on your phone, which can be very redundant. So at this point, we're going to enable the quote unquote active development. And to do that, we need to delete a few things and add a few things. Uh, the first thing we need to delete is this PCK file. So right click, delete, move to trash. Okay. And then the next thing we do is actually add in the Godot's folder, not the export folder, the actual Godot folder that we're working with. Project folder. So drag that over, put it at the very top. When this pops up, you want to click this check mark. Add to target and make sure this create folder references is checked. Otherwise, it will give you a bunch of errors about duplicating files, which you don't want to deal with. So make sure it's checked. Um, okay, so finish. And there's one last thing we need to do. Uh, if you go into mobile developments, uh, again, make sure this, this name up here, the underscore, is what I saved the iOS export as. And this mobile development is what the name of the Godot project is. So those do need to be different. Um, once you do that, uh, mobile developments and then supporting files, and then click on this. The mobile development is the name that I chose. So whatever you make your name of your project, it'll be there. So you want to open up the info file. You hover over the information property list, you'll get this plus. Click on that. And then in here, type in Godot underscore path. Now we do need to make sure it's a lowercase g at the very beginning. By default, it's going to be capital. Just delete the g, put it back in, hit enter, and then go off to the right under the value. Oh, this should stay string, by the way. At this point, if you hover or click on that, make sure it's highlightable, command c to copy it, and then go to value and paste that in. Enter. So the path is just looking for this folder path, not necessarily where you have the project saved on your computer. It's just the path to that folder within this Xcode window. So believe it or not, that's all it takes. So at this point, if we hit play again, it will show up on your phone just like it did before. We didn't change anything in Xcode, or I'm sorry, Godot yet. But just to show, comes up with the splash. Now, once you have it installed on your phone or iPad, 
you can close out of it and then relaunch it on your phone or iPad and it will be quicker for that initial startup. So don't think it's always gonna be that long. But uh, yeah, at this point it's installed on the phone. It'll do the same thing. So now for that active development, oh, real quick, let me, let's clear out this. So the update to recommended settings, click on that and then click on this check mark at the top and then perform changes. That'll at least clear that error. Now these ones we can't do anything about, but they're not gonna be affecting the actual app. So we don't really need to worry about them. It's yelling at us saying that the, um, the launch manager has been depreciated and launched images. But essentially this shows you the, uh, the picture that you put in for the splash screen will be here. And then your app icon that you put in will be here. So, but again, those, that's not gonna affect your app at all. It's just a warning and um, it still works. So don't worry about it. Okay, so now that we have Xcode configured for active development, we can go back to Godot and actually make a change and see how it goes on to your iOS device here. So to start, let's give this scene a new script. And then go back into my scripts folder. Just name it main, that's fine. Save and create. Okay. So we're gonna add a button to this scene. And just for example, we're gonna name it, give it text of click me. And we are going to move it there, sure. Make it a little bit bigger just so it's easier to click. I'm not really looking for aesthetics right now, but just for example. Um, then we're going to go to the nodes, give it a pressed signal, connect. And just for example, we're going to say print hello. All right, so at this point, um, you have the little asterisks here letting you know that this has not been saved. So if we were to run this again right now in Xcode, it would not update. It would just be the exact same as it was before. If we hit the play in Godot, we will now see that if we click, we get the hello. Now you can also see these in Xcode, which is very handy. At this point, we, we did the, we saved it. We ran it in the Godot editor, so we know it's all working there. We go back into Xcode, stop the task that was running before, and hit play. It will now download onto the phone again. And now this time, you'll be able to see the button that we just added. Once it loads, here it goes. Okay, so there's the button up there at the top. So if we look in Xcode, you do get a bunch of warnings in here, but again, they're not affecting, so I wouldn't worry about them too much. But if I go into my phone and tap the button, you get the print messages. For whatever reason, you do get duplicates of every message. So keep that in mind. It's not that the app is running incorrectly. It will only call it once. It's just any print statements come out duplicates. I'm not quite sure why. <laughs> Something is better than nothing, right? Anyway, um, so yeah, hopefully you guys found this useful. Um, it has been very time saving for me as I'm developing my apps. If you have any other questions, please leave a comment down below. I am currently making apps for the iPhone, iPad, Android phones, and tablets. So as I'm coming across different things for mobile development, I will be making more tutorials like this. So if you have any questions or suggestions, leave them in the comments below. Thank you for watching, and I hope you have a good rest of your day.